If you haven't watched the anime series or the live action yet, then there will be spoilers ahead, you've been warned. Instead of starting in the South Pole, we start in the Fire Nation, witnessing an Earthbender running away from a gang of Firebenders. And comparing the bending to seven benders throwing a fucking pebble, this is a major improvement. Guy gets arrested, and we see the Fire Lord who- HOLY FUCK! First on screen death. The Fire Lord is ready to start a war and want everyone to know. Yippee. Kiyoshi is apparently doing the intro now, and it definitely beats having to read a whole paragraph of words on screen. Next up, we see Aang having fun in the Southern Air Temple. Take that, the last airbender. Gyatso wants Aang to go help for a festival. Well, guess he can't stay on for long, the council needs Gyatso. We learn that Aang is the Avatar and the world needs him. Now we see Gyatso telling Aang how he's the Avatar, and even through all this, they will still be friends. And to be honest, the way this scene is portrayed is a million degrees better than Shyamalan. Aang leaves the Fire Temple, and ding dong, here comes the Fire Nation. Then we actually see how strong airbenders are with this fight scene, but it's a shame how none of the airbenders managed to survive the attack. Oh, and Aang got caught in the ocean and created an iceberg. Standard show stuff. Anyway, fast forward 100 years, and we see Katara trying to bend some water. No luck. Welcome to the Southern Water Trip. Wolf Cove? Is that what it's called now? Huh. Katara and his brother Sokka go on a fishing trip, and I guess they lead themselves directly into this glowing iceberg. What could that be? Oh shit, the boat's leaving. Katara tries to bend it back, and I guess that is what causes the iceberg to break? Hey babe, wake up, the avatar's back. Finally. A boy comes out, they bring him home, and wait the fuck up, you forgot Appa! Grand Grand tells him he's an airbender. Strange, we saw all of them die a hundred years ago. Aang wakes up, and we actually see him act like how a boy who woke up a hundred years would. The anime? I'm not the anime. Then who are you? I'm Aang. Where am I? How did I get here? Appa? Appa! Finally someone realized where Appa went. Oh wait, he actually brought a bison whistle with him. Dandy. Hey, Appa's here. He doesn't look like an SCP anymore. Aang meets up with the whole village to talk about what happened, and I guess Grand Grand's not going to sugarcoat it anymore. Only the Avatar, master of all four elements, could stop them. But when the world needed him most, he vanished. Everyone in the village knows this story. But you don't, do you, young man? Airbenders haven't been seen in generations. Zuzu wants to follow the light to search the Avatar. He's already started training, and in a way, Iroh feels more Iroh than Iroh has ever been for a live-action Iroh. My name is Iroh. We don't talk about you. Then we see Aang and Katara practice bending, which honestly makes for a really good scene in which both of them truly connect for the first time. Well, scene's over. Zuko's already here. Hello. Zuko here. Turn him over now, or I'll burn this place to the ground. Sokka says give the boy over, but Katara says no, so instead he decides to fight off Zuko. You and what army doesn't sound fair, so he wants a 1v1. No luck. Aang ends up surrendering himself, which prompts Sokka and Katara to go after them. Or, we could go another way. <laughs> you're not serious. Katara, no! There's a no way you're getting me on that- <laughs> This scene made me laugh. Then we see a conversation with Aang and Iroh where both of them talk about their perspective in the war, which is a really nice detail never seen before in the installment. Seeing Iroh and Aang converse in the beginning about why the war is really helps to show why everything has come to be. Aang takes Zuko's journal and escape. Zuko manages to launch one last fireball, but then Katara manages to block it up with water literally thousands of feet from the ground. Holy fuck. We go to the Southern Air Temple where they actually try to make the scene more emotional and succeeded in doing it. I can't imagine a better person to have been given this power. I have no words. This is truly a masterpiece. Overall, this episode started out in a much different path compared to the anime series, but if I had to choose between Shyamalan's film and the live action series, the live action series is definitely my pick. This was written at a much better scale, and I can't wait to see where this leads up. And that wraps it up for episode 1. Thanks for watching.